and everywhere. All right. We're live. There we are. Welcome, everybody, to Divination Night. I'm Ace tonight. I'm actually the guest tonight. Miss Gwendolyn is here, and she is your hostess with the most of tonight. Let's give everybody well, a little bit of time to get in. Yes. Yes. So what do you got up, girl? Well, tonight um, we are going to talk about Susan Shepard. She's a wonderful um, member of our community, and um, we want to honor her because she passed away on Monday. <clears throat> she battled cancer. Um, Asen's going to teach us a little bit of self-care, mm -hmm. and that is very important right now. And then we're going to have the lineup for the season finale, which is coming up next Wednesday night. Right. Good evening. How are you, Shannon? As my Google Calendar alerts us that we have an event tonight. <laughs> Sorry, guys, if you guys can hear that. Oh. So I am sharing this, you know, get this out there and get some people in here. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to miss tonight. No. Because there's going to be a lot of talk tonight and, you know, about next Wednesday night. But we do want to take a moment to honor Miss Susan Shepard. Um, there we go. Um, who I say, and according to a lot of articles, was West Virginia's top astrologer in the state. Um, great reader. Awesome, awesome reader. I loved working with her. She took no crap. She gave real good readings. And she's the first one who taught me how to have boundaries with people who go, mm -mm, you don't do that at my table. Good. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi, Shannon. Heidi. Colin. <laughs> Teresa, hey. All right, Heidi wants a reading. We will get to readings. I am starting the list. Mm -hmm. So please choose your your type of divination, Heidi. Yeah. All right. So do we want to get go ahead and get started? I think we should. I think we yeah. should. Yeah. Okay. So I am going to start this off. Um, I'm going to read Susan's obituary. <clears throat> Susan Shepard, noted poet, author, artist, and creator of Haunted Parkersburg Ghost Tours, died at her home Monday, April 19th. Sorry. <laughs> I hope I could do this without showing too much emotion. <clears throat> After a brief but courageous battle with cancer, and she did. She fought really hard. Mm -hmm. She was born July 1st, 1955 in Clarksburg a daughter of the late George Warren Friend and Gwendolyn Noreen Chapman Friend. She grew up in West Union, West Virginia before moving to Parkersburg in 1974. A graduate of Doddridge County High School, Susan also attended WVU Parkersburg and the University of Charleston, the University of Pittsburgh and Warren Wilson College in Sawanana, North Carolina. Over the years, she also studied with Gwendolyn Brooks, a Pulitzer Prize winning poet, noted local portrait artist Dorothy Decker, and many other poets and writers. Susan entered and won many awards over the years from West Virginia Writers, an organization she helped to create. Susan wrote the book and designed the original cards for use with her past life divination tool called the Phoenix Cards. They were published in 1990. The book and cards have been translated into several different languages and have sold more than 65,000 copies worldwide. Mm -hmm. 
While living in Parkersburg in the late 1980s, Susan was active in the local poetry scene there. This is where she befriended fellow writer Yun Wang, who recently gathered some of Susan's poetry into a collection that will be published later this year called Glamoury. Shortly after moving back to West Virginia from Pittsburgh in 1990, Susan was hired by KDKA TV in Pittsburgh to do astrological forecasts which were presented on the station's morning show. She was also the astrologer for Seventeen magazine for more than a year. For nearly 20 years, she appeared on WTAP's Daybreak show doing monthly astro astro astrology forecast. Mm -hmm. In the 1990s, Susan started researching and presenting talks about hauntings in the history of downtown Parkersburg and the surrounding areas. Eventually, these talks evolved into the haunted Parkersburg walking tours, which she and her helpers presented on weekends during the Halloween season for the past 25 years. Susan's tours became some of the most popular in the U.S., according to several websites that ranked them. She also appeared on many nationally broadcast TV shows about the hauntings in the Mid-Ohio Valley on the Travel Channel, Sci-Fi Channel, and others. <clears throat> the creation of which she was proudest was her daughter, Scarlett. She was born in 91. Scarlett carries on Susan's creativity and passion and has been a part of haunted Parkersburg ghost tours since she was very small. Susan's oil painting of Scarlett standing on the steps at New Orleans home of author Anne Rice is a warm display of Susan's love for her daughter. Susan battled many crippling autoimmune symptoms, which went mostly undiagnosed and untreated despite her efforts to find her root cause. It is remarkable that she accomplished as much as she did with so little energy, but sad that her health kept her from accomplishing even more of her dreams. She is survived by her daughter, Scarlett Shepard of Arcadia, California, brother James and Janet and their son, Tyler of West Union, Sister Carla and David Marks, their son Ryan and Ryan's son Ethan, all of South Point, Ohio. Brother Christopher of Parkersburg, Uncle W.P. Chapman Jr. of Cairo, West Virginia. Aunt Susan and Don Sandy of Parkersburg and many other cousins. She is survived by her close friend, Brady Young, her lifelong best friend, Regina Ball Metzger of Georgia, who was with her when she passed, and her former husband, Roger Shepard and Anna of Davisville. In addition to her parents, she was preceded in death by other relatives of the West Union and Cairo areas. Susan's family would like to thank fellow poet and friend Cheryl Wigall for her help in the last few months, along with Lynn Freckstone, Becky Sheehy, and her daughter Jenny, and Susan's recent caregivers, Chantal Gaynor, Kim Wilson, Arlene Woodfin, and folks at Amita's Home Health. <clears throat> to honor Susan and celebrate her life, the public is invited to a New Orleans-style memorial walk beginning at 3 p.m. this Sunday, April 25th. Wear your spooky Sunday best with comfortable shoes, it says. <laughs> Social distancing and protective masks are encouraged. Rain or shine, the walk will start at Bicentennial Park near the Blenner Hassett Hotel and proceed up Market Street to 9th Street. It will then turn west on for one block and then go north on Juliana Street. The walk will end at the gates of Riverview Cemetery, where folks will be invited to share memories and leave mementos, flowers, notes behind. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if you're in the area and you do want to go and attend, please go attend. She was a very, very big part of the spiritualist community. Um, some of the things not mentioned there, but she was a great tarot reader, great card designer. We're actually using her deck tonight, the Black Moon Astrology, as the Oracle deck. I am doing tarot. I do not have the Phoenix deck. Neither one of us do. Mm -hmm. um, there's other decks that she incorporated and worked with. Um, and also... You know, she taught a lot of spiritualist classes. Mm -hmm. Like many of the people in the spiritual community, 
were brought in because of Susan Shepard and her growth and her build there. Um, I know she taught spiritual mediumship. I know she taught astrology classes, of course. There was a lot of classes that she taught in the late 2000s, early, well, early 2000s, late, early 10s, early 2000s. Um, I was not a part of those classes, but from what I hear, a lot of the Parkersburg people were. Um, so, you know, there's always stuff left out of the bio in general. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, she also, and now I, I don't think, and now if you know, you correct me, um, I don't think she created the witch's runes, but she did write the book for the witch's correct. runes. She okay. did not create them. Yeah. Those were actually created probably 400 years ago somewhere in Ireland. Yeah. And she translated the book for them. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I remember talking about her um, in earlier episodes of Div Divination Night mm -hmm. um, because I, I had taught a class on making them. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we talked about her. So. Right. Her um, energy's been kind of with us this whole time. <laughs> it has, you know, it, and this happens. Um, you know, there's many founding members of the community. Um, Carol from Wild Wildflowers, she was a found, what I call a founding member of this community. She's now moved on to Williamsburg, I believe, with her daughter. Um, but um, Ann Reynolds, another reader in Charleston, founded a lot of the spiritualist activity in this state. She was a founding person of the um oh i want to call it the aquarian church there in charleston that's now no longer but you know she founded it and i'm sure susan was involved in all that susan wasn't involved in a lot of things in the spiritual community during that 90s to you know later 2000s and then of course her immune system Mm -hmm. autoimmune disease which is i'm going to go ahead and throw out my belief there are some things that come along with being psychic and i believe one of them being you know a lot of us have autoimmune disorders or uh, and you know can't find the causes of them or that type of thing, or they're called long form, meaning you have all the symptoms, but the, the quick little blood test doesn't point it. And that's where um, psychic self-care comes in. You know, when you're first developing your gifts, everyone gets taught a meditation. And I swear, I've taught the class probably three billion times and preach meditation. And I will watch the eye rolls go through the room and I'm like, yes, guys, let's get through this 15 minutes. Let's talk about this, understand the importance of that. And, and then I get the comments like I get all the time. I can't meditate. I fall asleep. Then I ask what music you're listening to. And people give me a weird look and they go, well, meditation music. That's not what you listen to. If your brain waves aren't on that pattern, don't listen to meditation music. I, when I was learning to meditate and still do at times, Black Sabbath, classical music, something with a heavy drum, that's wonderful for my meditation. L look at the music you listen to when you're in the car, you thump up the radio and you just drive. That's a form of meditation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Especially when you've got des you know, dense emotions you got to deal with. Those are going to run out. Yes, the Spotify playlist is wonderful. And I'm working on creating one and I'll put it out there about what I listen to. Um, but I listen to a lot of stuff. I listen to Black Sabbath, um, because if I'm wanting to work on my self image, um, the song Conceited, yeah, that's yeah. wonderful to meditate to. And you're like, What are you talking about? Ace meditation is supposed to be calming, relaxing, yeah. No. But look at our brain waves, look at our brain waves, they are not calm and relaxed and zending up. 
Yeah, drums. Drums, loud music, thumpa thumpa. You know, you know. If I ever get a chance to teach a in person meditation class again, it will probably sound like a '90s club beat for me. And that's what I'm going to teach people to meditate to. Well, that's rhythm. That's getting into a state of mind. Well, not only that, but that's getting control of your breath and learning to take that deep breath in on that beat drum there. Um, Evan Nensens is another wonderful one. Hadi recommended. Um, Of course, I love Alice Cooper. I thought always that would be good. Or White Snake, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, any music that you like that can get you to space out is what you need to be listening to when you meditate. I I know mine then. Okay. Pink, like, Fl- Pink Floyd and Queen. All right. Let's hear it then, you know. Um, well, we're not gonna do copyright, but you know, <laughs> you know. But meditation is a really big thing. The other part I hear is well, I can't get into position. Well, guess what? I'm an old bitch. I don't get into the lotus position anymore. My lotus done welted and said, forget this. I'm going to go lay in the mud. Okay. So sit comfortably or get up and move. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Move. Clean house. Some of my best meditation has been me buffing my wood floors. That's also how I work out a lot of problems before I have to open my mouth. But anyhow. (laughs) Whatever works. Whatever works. That's, you know, and it's highly important for if you are working in any realm of spirituality to develop a pattern of behavior of meditation before spiritual work. It's like if it's winter or I guess the middle of April, since we've had snow today. (laughs) Yes, we did. Start your car. And you let it warm up a little bit. Well, guess what? When you're working in the realm of spirituality and you're working in the realm of psychic anything, you need to warm that up a little bit. Meditation is wonderful for that. Yoga. I don't do yoga. I understand it's wonderful for a spiritual gift. Um, Rebecca Blair is my recommendation of a yoga teacher. Go see her. She has done magical things with it. Um, I will refer over to her expertise because I've been what for yoga TikTok from her. Haven't seen it yet. I'm hoping to see it soon. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, um, and then you know you got other things, with simple things that people don't think about. The other complaint I have is I don't have time to meditate. What you don't take a shower? Stick you Alexa in the bathroom and turn her up. Yeah. Absolutely perfect timing for that. Exactly. I mean You're just washing you're washing it especially if you're doing like visualization and stuff like that and you're you're washing all that negativity off of you. Mm-hmm. Wash all of it off. Let it all go. Exactly. Throw about a quarter cup of salt in your body wash. Scrub a dub a dub, especially you impasse out there and you know who you are. Stop hiding from the camera. I see you. <sighs> Definitely. You guys, you guys need to definitely take care of your self-care. Don't be wearing yourself out. Get as much sleep as your body needs. My body needs about four hours every 12 hours. Other people need 12 hours sleep so they can work an eight-hour job and they have two hours of spiritual work time. Other people don't need that amount, but you need to get the amount of sleep you need. If you are trying to develop a gift, you need to eat good. You know, and that's another bad habit of psychics, and I'm even guilty of it too. We get into the habit of eating salads and sandwiches. That don't work. Fast and on the go. Fast and on the go. That don't work. Now, everyone's got a place for McDonald's. We get that. We're not saying don't eat McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to be vegan, but I'm saying you have to eat good food, real food, especially if you want to do spiritual work. If you're noticing nightmares, if you're noticing you're walking into places and immediately you walk in and you're like, nope, I'm out of here or I'm going to kill somebody. That means yes. that you've got empathic skills. If you're thinking, you know, if you're saying something in your mouth and someone's going, oh, my God, you're reading your mind. No, 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 no. You have empathic skills. Understand you do. Learn to work with them. 
Learn to control them. Learn to use them in your life. Empaths are great salesmen because they can sense what the person needs, why they need it, and what they need it. Empaths are great nurses and doctors and healers are great nurses. Oh, yeah, it does. McDonald's yeah. smells like death, but they're triple, but they're double, their McDoubles and fries will make an old man happy. <laughs> <laughs> the, we Lydia and I did a survey, well, an experiment, and we tested fries from everywhere that is around here, and McDonald's won. Well, of course so. they did. They've got cocaine in them. So what? What would be the first thing? Uh, somebody that that is realizing that they have empathic gifts, what is the first thing that you would tell them to do? Get a journal. Journal, journal, journal. Write it down, write it down, write it down. Because your logical brain needs to be able to verify, you know, yesterday I thought about Dave. I almost said Susan. She must be talking to me on the other side. I bet she's gossiping with Sylvia. But anyhow. <laughs> You know, yesterday I thought about Dave. Today he called. And you go looking through your journal and three days later, heard from Dave again, dreams of Mary last night. She came by with a cake. Flip it over. Mary gets a new job. Of course she's bringing you a cake because she's celebrating. So you've got to feel it in because let's think left brain, right brain. Right brain is all like we're into this. Let's, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning. Let's wake up and call up Elvis. Find out what songs he forgot to release. <sighs> Left brain is like, oh no, you ain't. I got to get my beauty sleep and there is a cell at Walmart's. <laughs> get your ass back in bed. I need more sleep. So as you're developing your skills, you want to journal it. One of the things I teach in Journey of the Fools is keeping a reading journal. But for an empath or someone that says they have social anxiety, write down what you feel, why you feel it, when you feel it, around who you feel it. <laughs> Thank you, producer. <laughs> By the way, did you notice this? Look at us. What, honey? I'm in purple. It doesn't look it. I know. <laughs> but I think it's funny that we kind of match. Mm -hmm. Totally did not plan that. All right. So, Miss Heidi, I'm calling you out because I can see your or your name here. Some people, please realize if you are in a private group, you may show up as Facebook user. Um, you know, waking up at 3 a.m. in the night, having full conversations and sleeping alone. I end up lighting, uh, end up lighting my blessing candle and rubbing the rosemary oil. What are you trying to work on remembering this? Grab a, put a notepad and pen by your bed. Anybody wants to learn how to remember their dreams or interpret their dreams. Put a notepad and a pen by your bed. Leave it there. In the morning when you get up, write anything you remember. You know, if you wake up in a badass mood, fuck the world and the planet it came with. Okay? You'll start seeing, damn, today was a real hellacious day. Because look at what I wrote. And then, you know, these are the notes. Ooh, I don't want to repeat April 23rd again. Let's try this one. Now. Let's talk about your environment. Mine looks probably cluttered to you. Gwen's looks probably organized and neat. Granted, you know, mine's like research and all this other shit and crap that, you know, I need my kids to come and take um, just in general. But your environment, you will notice that you need to keep it cleaner when you're a psychic. You will notice that dirt comes out of nowhere. This room, my office, I can sweep and mop it daily, and I will still get two dustpans out of it. And my office is only 7 by 13 feet. It's all the energy we put off. Yeah. Okay? It's all that energy you exude. Also, get a tool. Don't care what. Don't care what deck. As long as it's a working deck, don't bring me a fluffy deck to my class. Learn it. Learn it well. Then get another tool. 
Learn it well too. Yeah, because dirt is a symbol of negative, restless energy. Clutter is, you know, I find, you know, let's talk paranormal for a minute. I find that three things occur in paranormal spaces. One, it's cluttered as heck. Two, there is either a female in puberty or a female in menopause. One of the two guarantee you get poltergeist activity if you are an un un unsharpened psychic. Especially if you're an unhappy, unhappy psychic. Yeah, it, it, it's like everything gets attracted to you at that point. Well, no, you're creating it. I know, but it that's what it seems like. It seems mm -hmm. like you're you're attracting it. But yeah, like I have probably been called in in the past four years on about 30 paranormal cases. We've got this going on. We don't understand. Do you know how many go real actual conscious living ghosts I found? Two. And both of them were pissed that the house was redone. That's it. Mm-hmm. The rest of it is leftover energy in the building that, gee, grab some sage, do some cleaning, burn some sage, do some more cleaning, done, gone, never hear from it again. Or we've got an unhappy female with a husband that doesn't listen, or we got an unhappy female teen that's an empath that thinks that nobody in the world listens to them. So what happens? They keep repressing that and repressing that, and it, it builds an edergory. And then that edergory goes throwing plates around in the kitchen. Or, you know, flipping lights on and off. Pay attention to me. Pay attention to me. It has nothing to do with a ghost. Most of the ghosts don't care, and it's like, please, get out yeah. of my kitchen. What are you and, doing in my kitchen? And you are absolutely right about poltergeist. I've found that on, on investigations as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Right. Okay, so for um, comment, what kind of reading that you want, uh, Mika? Um, thank you for joining us. Yeah, hello, baby doll, uh, Mika. We're doing two types of readings tonight. We're either doing Black Moon Astrology Oracle Deck, or we're doing Tarot. You get to choose which deck we use, and of course, I prefer a question, or I will do general. But it'll be a short general, fast and dirty. <laughs> yeah, Heidi, we're still waiting for you to choose your type of divination that you yep. wanted. Oh, and if you have a question, Heidi's up first, and then I think Colin asks for you, and then I'll take Mika. Okay, I did. I'm glad you said that because I did not see Colin's. I saw him come through. Okay, cool. I'm writing them down now. All right. Okay, so I, do you find it more more noticeable for people in in our fields? Yes, that are, that are more spiritual than religious. Very. Because I. Of course, I've been on this whole shadow work journey and everything, and it popped mm -hmm. into my head that I've always said, even though I've went to church and went through all of that on my own, um, I still always said that I was more spiritual than religious. Well, see, this is what people don't get. <laughs> <coughs> there is spiritualism. <coughs> there is spiritual. Then there's Wiccan, Pagan. Those are nice little labels. There are witches. There are witches that are bitches. I'll take that label. Thank you. <laughs> there are Christians who believe and have spiritual gifts and spiritual practices. So I find that as long as you've got one of them, you're fine. Doesn't matter which. You got to believe in something or someone will fall or you'll fall over. 
And then there are some that are scientific, and I see science as a religion. You know, and some religions are science, like witchcraft and Wicca. It's science and spirituality and all that blended into one. Okay, so... All right, Heidi said a general reading, so... Okay, who's taking her? Um, that would be you. Okay. Nine, nine, four, 78. Okay, so nine and four and 78. All right, so we're going to use Black Moon Astrology. This is Susan's deck, which I love. It's based on astrology symbols, so you have to know a little bit of astrology to read it. We'll see what comes up. I'm going to do a standard three-card spread on this, and we'll see where we're at. All right, Miss Heidi, you have been at Neptune. You've been sacrificing too dang much. Is it worth it? You need to be asking yourself. All right, right now you're at Void, of course, and missing out in action. You're not paying attention to stuff. Wake up. And then you're fine, you know, moving forward, the air element. Communication is going to be key to what you need after you wake up and get moving. So pay attention to what's being said around you. Get involved in what's in your brain and then start expressing it. I think that's exactly what she needed to hear. Well, if she didn't, honey, you know. It Sorry. wouldn't have come through. <laughs> exactly. And just a word to the warning, I am not fluffy. Hmm. Or no, sleep. and I'm learning not to be. I know. I'll tell you, I just need okay. to take you shoe shopping. <laughs> Hold on, I had to make a note. Okay. All right. So, Colin, I guess you wanted trauma and terror, right? Oh, that's what you're getting, darling. Uh. Okay. So, got a lot of love, a lot of caring, a lot of nurturing. So, I talk about your home life. There, there is a lot of um, actually. I'm kind of picking up. Okay, so we got the six, the seven, and the ten, all of cups. So I'm. You want I'm me sorry. to go? Not a problem. Actually, go ahead. I know you're going to step up here, but I just, I just see, I see some things coming, coming for him that are are good. I see some things lining up for him. All right, show you the first card. Six of cups. Keep it simple. Stop complicating relationships. Seven of cups. Where's your goals? What are you working on? Ten of cups. Focus on the family and hearth. So your final outcome is you need to be focusing on the home. What's your goals with it? And remember, keep it simple. Stop complicating crap. <sighs> oh. I just, you know what, I'm, I just kind of feel a little disconnected tonight. That's okay. Uh, I can rock this along. I can. I rock know you can, along. honey. I bet you know. I will say this, and not pe many people know this. I done my father's funeral. We came home. I had some chicken and bet and potato salad, and I had two appointments that night. Yeah. Because this is the work I do. This is the work that Susan did. This is the work a lot of people that are in the psychic industry do. And it's the way we connect with the other side. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've done... Well, well, I've been doing paranormal investigation for 10 years. And um, I've actually been part of the pagan community for less than that. Uh-huh. So well, you came along, you came along. Hey, let me tell you something. When I set my mind to something, I can accomplish anything. All right. Who's next up? Uh, Mika. Mika. She says, she's trying to figure out what happened in my past that still affects her today. If that makes sense. I'm always fighting depression and anxiety. Okay. Give her, me her birthday. 2-20-82. Okay. 
So make it, I'm going to pull the astrology on this. I'm going to do a standard three card, and let's see what we get hinted at here. Because I'm feeling this has nothing to do with this life. <sighs> All right, so out of the gates, we're going to be looking at the fire element, your desires. We're also going to be looking at your spiritual side with the sun. And then we're going to be working on transformation. So if we put that together, you've got some leftover stuff from a past life that was very hard for you. You probably saw a lot of hard stuff from what I'm feeling, and it got brought into you with this life. This is why you're always feeling depressed and anxiety. You're unsure of yourself. You're still trying to figure out how to pull it all in, pull it together. You're still trying to figure out why you have these emotions when it comes to certain things. Here's an example. When it rains, I have trouble breathing. I know that is connected from a time when poison gas was a thing. So when it's raining, I use an umbrella. So I don't get that anxiety feeling there. Your depression and your anxiety, you need to look and see what the triggers are. I.e. if you get anxiety around lakes, cars, buildings, streets. I also feel like this will take a little bit of research on your part. Okay. And also working with releasing that from your past and understanding that it's no longer serving you. So it's kind of like shoes that are too small for you, but you keep putting them on. They make your feet hurt, your ankles swell, your toes get blue, you get cranky feet, but you're still putting them on. You've already passed that lesson, honey. Let it go. Release it. Tell your spirit gods you don't need that information anymore. Any of that will work. Okay? Good. Hopes that helps, Miss Mika. I'm sure. Okay, so next up is Shannon. Okay, Miss Shannon. So she wants Black Moon Astrology, mm -hmm. 8 1877. And uh -huh. she said, I've had several people contact me lately that I don't know, just in general, male mm -hmm. and female. What's up with that? Okay, let me get them in the order. Right. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, just let you know that after we do some readings, we're going to get into what's up for next week with the season finale. Yes. Good. And she said that helps. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Mika. It's also probably why you have trust issues to people that are taller than you. Following back to Mika. All right, Miss Shannon, people are contacting you. You want to know why? Hmm. All right, Shannon, I need a little bit more information. Are you currently taking applications for partners? <clears throat> and here's why. Because when we look at the root of the situation, we have the seventh, the seventh house here, which is partnerships, relationships. Then we have you looking for stability in your life. So those two things popping up here is maybe not you taking applications, but them looking for you. And it's like, mm, no, thank you. You can go on. Your final outcome is mystery, which is the divine work on yourself. So I would, you know, be looking at them and going, sorry, either no, you do not want a partner. No, you are, that position is not available and no go away it's just bad timing and um I, I don't know but a lot of people have been really working on themselves a lot lately mm -hmm. and and see like, when your exactly light you gets brighter when your light gets by, brighter when you're living a good life or you're learning something new every time you get the what i call the bug to the light effect and people just start contacting and communicating and trying to get in contact with you. And it's like, go away. I'm happy. Because you're happy. So what's up with that? Your light's shining too bright. And you have the availability sign on when you don't need or want it on. See it as a compliment, but send them on down the road. Yes. 
There you go. Okay, so that's that's everybody that has hopped on. Okay. So what are we doing? Do we, now are we going to do a true desperate house psychic? What do you mean? Well, you know when there's a reunion on the desperate housewives. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. So not everybody is going to be coming back at one time. Uh, space this out a little bit so that everybody gets a chance. Now, mm -hmm. this is what you do if you want to take part. I have been posting over in the event. It's on Rowan Temple of Light's page. Go to the events and you will see Divination Night season finale for next week. Go to whoever the reader is that you would like a reading from mm -hmm. and comment on there and we will make sure that your reading gets done live on the air so mm -hmm. stay tuned to um to in tune in at, at, at that reader's time to uh, to get your reading but we hope that you come and stay the whole time because we have some of the gr greatest readers <laughs> from this season and i say this season yes even though we are closing it down we're going to bring it back over the winter months after festival season's over with hopefully we can we can all you know give us Join something that. to do yeah right, right. and all be right. bigger and better it will be now will you read miss heidi's comment and okay. i will take this on and tell her what to do all right. I have done a banishing spell, yet the other person energy is still heavy around, and I don't understand why. There hasn't been any contact on my end to them, but they have tried to on theirs. Am I doing something wrong? What more can I do? Oh, well, I don't think you're doing something wrong. It just may be that they're a little dirty. Meaning they're kind of like a dog that you feed a biscuit to. They just coming, keep coming back for another biscuit. This is my procedure. When I am done with somebody, completely done with somebody, and I have decided they deserve to be banished, first thing I do is get my broom and my mop and my mop water. And I get a Ziploc bag and a piece of paper and a bottle of water. I want a bottle of water. I do not want water coming out of my tap. Because no one's, nobody gets the energy out of my tap. Take a bottle of water, preferably cheap. You want that 32 to 78, whatever. The cheapest bottle of water, smallest bottle of water you can find. Okay, you're going to drink some of that bottled water. And, of course, you're going to put backwash in there. Then you're going to take, and you're going to take that piece of paper, and you're going to write their name down on that piece of paper three times. You just need a little piece of paper. Don't be writing it big. Just write it down three times. Fold it three times. Put it in the bottle. Seal the bottle. Put the bottle in a Ziploc bag. Take said bag and throw in freezer and slam the door and tell them to get the fuck out. <laughs> then you're going to mop your floors from your bedroom to your back door to your front door. Okay? And then when you get to the front door, you're going to open the front door up, make sure nobody's walking up your steps, and throw the water out. I don't care where you live, throw it out. Then you're going to slam the door. That should keep them away. Now, here's the hard part of that. If you move, you put them in a cooler, and you toot them along with you. And you put them back in the freezer behind the peas. Yes. Okay. You got that, Heidi? Do you need notes? I have a secretary in our production room that can take notes for you. <laughs> and and Heidi, you can always watch later. Yes, I'll send watch you the later. Link. I'll send message you me. Link. I don't have a problem telling you how to get rid of people in your life. Yes. Make sure that you don't have anything that resembles them. You know, you don't need their sweatshirt. You don't need their hat. You don't need their socks. We want them to go into boxers and other things that people collect. Shoot that shit on down out the road. Burn it. Bury it. Take it to the <laughs> graveyard. <laughs> All right, Miss Amy. Amy. Step on up to the plate here. All right. Um, 
I could use some advice. I have someone who's being jealous, hating person towards me. What can I do to protect myself so I don't beat her ass and go to jail? Well, first of all, don't ask me for strength. Because normally <laughs> when you ask me for strength, your next request will be for bail money. Bail money. <laughs> <laughs> That's first off. <laughs> Second off, honey child. They're being jealous. And they're hating on you. Sounds like they need to go into a vinegar jar. Vinegar oh. jars are quite easy. You get a jar. You put it with about a half cup of vinegar in it. If this person is your trouble, meaning you brought them in, if there was a divorce, they would still be your trouble, you piss in the jar. If they're the husband's problem, i.e. he brought them in, make him piss in the jar. You're taking your write the name again, but this time you're going to write the name on a piece of paper five times. You're going to fold it five times. You're going to put it in the jar. You're going to take some cayenne pepper and some black pepper, and you're going to seal that up real nice and good. Then you're going to seal that jar up nice and tight. You put a candle on there. I prefer black if I'm wanting it protection. I'll put red on there if I want them to have a scarlet letter across their name. Or sometimes I just turn it over to the angels and put a white candle on there. Let them figure out what to do with it. Yep. And I melt that candle in there. And then every time they piss me off, I shake it up. Like a rattle. You can do that. They'll go away. Or they'll be taken away. Yeah. Your, their choice. Yeah. So I've got a question for you. Okay. So after, after you talking and, uh, and giving some wonderful advice, um, what kind of magic would that be? What kind would of magic that fall would that... under under anything like uh yes 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 Amy that is magic okay. that, is, that is magic and magic and magic um okay so okay this this leads to to a question okay. Are you ready yes ready for this one Okay, uh -huh. so it's it's been going around, and we talk. You both of us are on TikTok. Both of us are on TikTok. So I don't know if you've seen it or not, but spiritual TikTok is going crazy because they were freaking out. Um, one of one of the people that I follow um, read a hoodoo book, and people are freaking out about practices open and closing. So, what have you? Yeah, I know I'm being controversial here, and I'm pushing the envelope, but okay. here we go. This is my line for opening open practices versus closed practices. I I don't, honestly, I can tell you I'm not very versed, I, so I, I don't... I will clarify okay. for everybody in my viewing area. Okay. Let's closed go. practices you will not find in a book. You will not find on a YouTube. You will not find in a spiritual store. You will not find anywhere except in a grimoire of a high priest or high priestess. Or a practitioner of root. Or a grand von. Or a déjà vu. Or a tesh. Or a kosh. Any of those, you're never going to find. You don't even know they exist unless you're part of the bloodline. Open practices become open the moment they become a non-private. Mm -hmm. Using sage is not a closed practice. That has been going on not only from the Native American side, but all the way back to Welsh sides in the 1300s when it wasn't sage. It was gathered herbs. That's why we need to have so many protection herbs that are fat leaves so they can roll up and burn. Uh-huh. Y'all people having problems with drama. People come to your old houses, get a jar, fill it with dry beans, then pour salt over it. That's Appalachian magic. That comes from everywhere. Hello, Miss Ashley, darling. How are you? All right. Um, Heidi, do not mix them together. You ain't going to need a big jar. You're going to need two jars. <laughs> 
Okay. So, um, so, so yeah, yeah, I yeah. was, go I was going to do a TikTok to, to be, because I, for our Rowan Temple of Light Pagan Library, I received a lot of hoodoo, root, conjure books and, and a lot of, um, herbs mm -hmm. that you don't normally wouldn't find, but it was all donated. Uh huh. No, a of lot course. of the things that we were donated, I have found homes for, but of mm -hmm. course I kept some of the stuff. Here's the thing though. Those books are public information. Mm -hmm. That information does not teach you how to charm a snake. Mm -hmm. That information does not cause you to, to be able to call up a storm with an umbrella. That information does not indoctrinate you to hoodoo or actually indoctrinates you to voodoo because hoodoo is the practice of the magic. Voodoo is the practice of the religion. Yes. That yeah, is hoodoo. open practices. You would go, if we go back a hundred years and we talk to a voodoo who is also an occultist, who is also has a grandmother who's Romy, who's gypsy, so she's a root worker, and maybe she's a path worker, she will give you a recipe list like I gave you. Mm -hmm. Here's recipe, go handle it. No, I'm not doing it for you. You can go do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, you need that energy, your own energy to put in there. Well, not only that, but, you know, I'm not paying the coin for your bullshit. Mm -hmm. if I'm you. I got to pay the coin for your bullshit. You better have, make sure that I have something in it. But and this is okay. the other thing that tisses me off. That is not black magic, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mika said, um, "Is there a spell or magic I can do when I'm out trying to have fun with my boyfriend and I start worrying about things? Something to banish my thoughts, banish them." No, I want you to do something real simple. Mika, do you live in the city or do you live in the county in the county area? Because I don't, I know I have your address, but I can't think of it. Why don't you go somewhere where you can find rocks, and I want you to pick up a rock. And when you're out with your boyfriend, and I want you to take it home, and I want you to wash it. I want you to take it. And I want you to spray your favorite perfume on that rock. You know, the one that makes you feel good, and he likes you smelling that way. And then I want you, when you're getting ready for your date, put it in your pocket. You start getting stressed at work, just rub the rock. That's simple. That's all you got to do. Great. Go find your rock outside, preferably on your land. If not on your land, make sure it's public land. Because we don't want to be, you know, passing any good love vibes onto you, like the next door neighbor or anything. That could get weird. Okay, so Heidi asks, can a person who is pagan do a voodoo spell? Well, let me rephrase the question. Okay. Okay, because the question's wrong. Okay. Can a person who is pagan do a hoodoo spell? Yes. Can a person who is pagan go to a voodoo ceremony? Yes. Can a pagan be a, can be a voodoo hoodoo? Yes. A lot of Caribbean there, you know, get your passport because you're going to have true voodoos go to Africa or go to the Caribbean to get initiated. Mm -hmm. You ain't been to either of them. Don't come talk to me. Okay. She said, okay. Fact, our grandmothers and our great grandmothers were looking and go, a what? Do a what? Well, honey, what you want to do? Well, hell, let me get the recipe for you. Well, hell, let me get the recipe for that too. Oh, Mary Beth, you done a puppet, a puppet thing last week for that man that got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bring in that. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's flip this open. Oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, this is how you do a voodoo doll. We all come from the same cloth. If we did not run around, and millennials are bad about this. Like, they're getting to the point that I'm about ready to go, mm. hey, hello, from Generation X, <laughs> carrying messages from the silent oh. generation. You guys are classifying too much. Uh, yeah, but have you seen that they, 
that they're saying that it's up to Gen X to fix this, to like bridge the gap and like fix the generational um, fuss. I guess. Would you have you heard this? I so now we're it. responsible. Not only are we responsible for our own childhood traumas that we had to deal with, but now we have to ge- deal with gener. You know, uh, fixing everybody else's generation and be the middle child and fix everybody's crap. Uh, forget that. <laughs> the silent generation doesn't give a damn. The boomers are done fed up. Us millennials <laughs> are done with the shit. You know, our Generation X's are done with this shit. Millennials can classify it out the wazoo. I'm tired of this brand new spiritualism. Because the ancestors have one thing to say. We don't give a crap. Okay. So there's that one. Yeah. Now, okay. I, you know, you got me on my soapbox. Hey, you know what? We we haven't got a chance to chat and really push the envelope, so I figured it was time to open up a can tonight. Well, you know, I haven't gotten a lot of hate mail this week, so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got to keep my title of Voldemort of West Virginia. Uh, I haven't in a while. I'm not. I'm not inviting it though. I don't want any. I've got to work on that. Okay, so Heidi says I have a book on voodoo. See, I do too, darling. Should I just toss it out then? I got it off Amazon, haven't used it. I do have the alphabet written down. Does that mean I cannot do any of it? I'm trying not to be difficult, but just clarify. No, we understand, honey. Oh, yeah. Read it's that okay. book. Use that book. Tether that book. Let me get my book out of my inbox a moment. Can you pop me down so I can get my book? Okay, so... Again, I want to tell you how to um, participate in next week's Divination Night because it's a little different. Uh, since it is the season finale, we're doing things a little different. Um, everybody's popping on at scheduled times. So go over to the event and find – and I'm, I'll have everybody posted up there tonight. Um, but all of our readers will be posted. Go to what, pick your reader, comment under it, and tune in for your reading during that time bracket. Um, there is a list scrolling across the bottom of the screen. So those are our readers. And uh, ASIN will be starting things off with me um, next Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. So here's my top three book recommendations out there. And Heidi, if you got one of these, read it. <sighs> Utterly Wicked by Dorothy Morrison. Guess what? This isn't wicked. This is not This is mostly hoodoo witchcraft, root work. I read it. Use it. Heidi, you got a voodoo book? Read it. Use it. Authors work damn hard to produce this stuff. Yes, they did. Okay. I've got her book one, but I prefer her book two, the modern witchcraft book two. And one of my favorite, and it's uh, and it's Pennsylvania Dutch magic, and I ain't got any Pennsylvania Dutch in me, Hexcraft. This is the second book. The first book got so color-coded and, and tagged that I had to get a second one. I have one that's kind of popular right now. Hold on one okay. second. But this closed practice, blah, blah, blah. If it is in a book, learn it. Learn it well. Get into it. Dig into it. Figure out why the author put it in there. Figure out when it became practicable. And then figure out where it came from. You'll find out it probably came from 10 different places. It ain't closed craft. Closed craft is stuff that is down there in a book you'll never see. Okay, so here's what, right. here's here's the section. All right, you start bringing up the books. I'll give you my coffee rating. Okay, okay. The art of making mojos. Four cups. Everyday voodoo. If that ain't token, I want it. Yeah, these are part of our pagan library. You can check them out just like any other normal library. Okay, good. Uh, the Voodoo Hoodoo Spell Book. Four cups. Haitian Voodoo. Three cups. She's a little sketchy on her background. Old Style Conjure. 
Ooh, that one's good. Have you read The Doctor yet? No, no. Okay. Okay, and then the last one, this is one I said was really popular. I know that Earth Magic had it in stock. Uh, Crossroads of Conjure. Oh, that is a five-cup book. You need bookmarks and highlighters and a notebook. Yeah. So these, these were all donated. I did not buy them. These were all donated, and I, I got 29 Deadly Sigils. That might well, come in. I have the key of Solomon. You know, I pull it out <laughs> on the occasion. You know, personally, I don't need to call up demons. I have enough of my own under my command. That's right. Okay. So, as as our little little thing there. Oh, the last one, Crossroads and Cross Crossroads of Conjure, and this is by uh, Katrina Rasbold. Yep. Crossroads of Conjure, yes. Earth Magic has it. Go see them. Tell them the Roan Temple of Light sent you. Yes. Is it the roots and practices of Granny Magic, Hoodoo, Bruja, and I don't know how to pronounce that at last one. Do you know that one? Over. <laughs> Over. There we go. Corderosa. Yeah. I there had no idea. But great. That's, I mean, this is West Virginia magic. All of it is magic. Witchcraft is magic. Voodoo is magic. Okay, okay sis. Yeah. Well, again, read it. Use it. Find it. This is why magic dies. This is why mm -hmm. practices die. If we look at our founders, Alexander Saunders, Raymond, but not Raymond. Well, Raymond Buckland, mm -hmm. Gerald Gardner, um, Alistair Crowley. They didn't care where it came from. Nope. They pulled it all together and used it and created their own. Exactly. Maxine Saunders. Y'all guys want to get into angel magic, angel workings? Guess where that started at? That started in a basement up on Brick Street in England when Maxine Saunders says, well, what about angels? Why don't we work with them? And they started experimenting. Great. Free information, honey. Free information. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so we ready to um, ready to talk All about right. next week's lineup. You talk about next week's lineup, guys. If you got questions, you'd be putting them in the boxes here. I'm going to shoot through them fast and quick, but I will gladly take any questions: magic, divination, whatever, or just bitchery. <laughs> That's always fun. Okay, so like I said, starting up um, next week at eight p.m. Um, Asim will be joining him to be first off. Um, and then at 8.15, we have the Optimist coming on. Um, at 8.30, we have Alicia. If you were, if you, okay, so if you remember the Optimist um, on his episode, we talked about the divination dice. On Alicia's, we talked about, that's whenever we start talking about the trauma and tarot, she does shadow work cards. Um, at nine o'clock, because we're taking like a little little break there about 8.45. Um, but at 9 o'clock, we have Dottie the Psychic. And if you remember remember hers, she does all types of divination. She is not divination restricted at all. She'll, gi she'll give you whatever you need. <laughs> and then 9.15, we're scheduled with Jennifer. Um, if you remember her, she's with Sunshine Smiles. That is that is hers. Um, she what is what is the deck that she's? I can't remember what it's called now. I'm sorry. Um, at nine thirty is Sacred Yana. If you you remember their episode, um, she did a little channeling. She's going to do a collective reading for everybody at nine thirty. And then at nine forty five, we have Sarah Snodgrass finishing out the night with her. And then Asen will come back on and we'll, we'll close out the season and say our final goodbyes. Yep. So, and of course, you know, I'm going to be the rounding Reynolds of the sea of the season. I want to know who the two drunk ones are and I want to know which one gets arrested. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, we're gonna wait to see. We'll we'll rate everybody at the end of tomorrow night to see how the the readings went to to see who who was who. Um, but if you've missed any episodes, you can go to our YouTube page, Rowan Temple of Light on YouTube, and um, there is a playlist divination night and all the episodes are on there and and i just have to say thank you all so much for making this a great experience i've had a blast with everybody and everybody has been so great it's been a wonderful thing and you know we'll look forward to season two. Oh yeah and it's going to be bigger and better Yes. And, you know, next week I'm going to talk about something new I'm going to be doing. Mm -hmm. re a fill reveal. In a reveal. Yes, a reveal. <laughs> so, again, just go over to the event. I will have every everybody listed up there uh, by the end of tonight. So stop by in, in the morning and um, put your birth date. And if you have a question um, for that reader, and we'll make sure that they get them up, um, get them, get the readings done on live. It might take us past 10 o'clock, but we're going to fit everybody in. Well, it might be here to midnight, depending on how fast we can get people's questions in there. Okay, Mika has a question. Any advice you can give me on a relationship with my boyfriend before you leave? 22082. Mm. We're always PM. I am yes. empirical scheduled. Yes, uh, 8 p.m., just like we always have, have been having Divination Night. And when we come back for Season 2, um, it will still be Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. So we're not going to change change the time or, or the day of the week because you still need something on hump day. <laughs> all right, so advice about the boyfriend. Well, first of all, don't get who hung up. I think you get stuck in your emotions and your fears, and you got to lighten up on that, Mika. Have some fun with him. He's a little joy joyous dude. He's actually pretty good. You get nitpicky with yourself. Knock it off. And then enjoy the emotions. Enjoy the courting. Don't be going, well, where, you know, are we going to marry next week? Are we going to enjoy the courting? Enjoy the fun. Enjoy the experience you're having there. Other than that, I think you're doing damn good, girl. And by the way, for the lawyers, that is two twenty of eighty-two. Yes. All right. <sighs> Anybody want any other questions before we leave out tonight? I water? think this was a good night. We learned a lot, and um, remember, um, I'm just gonna let y'all know this is the candle for West Virginia Day of Prayer. It is still burning. And it's lit right now, as you can see, um, to in, in remembrance of Susan Shepherd. Mm -hmm. <sighs> all right. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Have a lovely evening. Make sure you go get a shower. You've had busy days at work and you, you're all your energy is all stinky from work. Don't go to bed, you know, and don't go to bed and put your shoes at the foot of the bed because no one wants to carry you out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and remember, make your mark and make it well. Good night, y'all.